Perfect. So thank you for that warm welcome um, and thank you for having me to speak today. Uh, I am actually really excited about the space for art therapy within our youth service and I'm really looking forward to a very informative and interesting day ahead. So as mentioned, unfortunately, my colleague Dr. Ravan Nagar is not going to be presenting with me, um, but I did want to say a little bit about her and her role. So she is a very passionate about empowering patients um, and she is the patient experience lead for Southampton Children's Hospital. She also developed the Ready, Steady, Go transition programme, which some of you, if you're working in health, may know. Um, it's all about um, supporting transition from children's services to adult services. Um, and I'm a youth worker, Ellie, from the Peer Project Youth Service at Southampton Children's Hospital. And our youth service supports patients aged 11 to 25 with long-term health conditions. Okay, next slide, please. So to start at the beginning, um, it's been widely recognised that patients with long-term health conditions have an increased incidence of mental health issues compared to their well peers. Um, studies have found that this is true across many conditions. So to name a few, kidney disease, epilepsy and uh, rheumatology. Next, please. Um, and this study in particular explored this theme with a sample of patients with kidney disease. They found that this cohort were twice as likely to experience mental health issues than their well peers. Um, and studies with epilepsy and diabetes patients have also found similar outcomes. And the percentage of mental health issues always appears to be around 30 to 40% for these cohorts. And that's compared to 15% for the general public. Next slide, please. Um, and it appears that these problems are often beginning in childhood and they can be quite established by the time that the patient moves to adults care. Um, so our team wanted to put support in place in childhood to address these areas of need and hopefully promote better outcomes for our patients later in life. Next, please. So this is where our peer project youth service started. So it was developed by Dr. Arvind Nagra and it is made up of myself and my colleague, Sarah Shemetti. And we support with both health and non-health topics. So this could include school, peer support um, and emotional well-being. Um, and we offer a mixture of one-to-one -one support and group activities. And we strive to provide a young person led service that is supportive, fun and empowering. Uh, we also extend this support to parents and siblings of our patients as and when needed. And since March last year, much the same as um, everybody else, we've had to adapt the majority of our work to be delivered virtually. So our youth support and our group activities all came onto Zoom um, and we've had fun kind of navigating that and building on that. Um, and this has meant that we have been able to continue supporting young people and their families throughout this period, which is a time when they may have needed that support the most. Next slide, please. Um, but we found that our patients still needed more support than we could give as a youth service. So that's where we found art therapy and we thought it offered a super way to be able to support children and young people virtually throughout COVID-19. With the help of the funding from Circle of Arts and the Big Lottery, put together with the expertise and support of Teapot Trust, we began art therapy with some of our patients. Next, please. So in summer 2020, we recruited a lovely art therapist named Pippa. And through some conferences, Dr. Nagra had heard about the wonderful work of the Teapot Trust and chose to approach them for guidance and support with the governance of art therapy. Kirsty also helped with the recruitment process and was part of the interview panel for Pippa. So we've kind of had Teapot Trust on board and supporting us all the way through this process right from the start. Um, and then children who were struggling were identified by our hospital MDT and considered for art therapy. And this was also open to siblings of our patients because they too have increased psychosocial needs and are often really impacted by their siblings' um, health diagnosis. Um, and from the start, it was a priority that the art therapist was fully integrated into our hospital team so that they could better understand the nature of the young person's illness. Before the young person began their sessions, uh, we collected a baseline measure of emotional well-being. And for this, we used an adaptive version of the Warwick Edinburgh Mental Wellbeing Scale, and we collected the responses via, uh, via SurveyMonkey. Sessions were then either on a one-to-one -one basis or for a group with a shared support need. So for example, managing anxiety. Um, they were delivered via Zoom. And after the initial introductory session, young people were encouraged to participate independently. However, in some instances, a youth worker did join the sessions. And this was to help the young person to feel comfortable in both their relationship with the therapist and the process of art therapy as well, if it was new to them. 
Um, after six weeks of sessions, progress was reviewed and sessions were extended if needed. And at the end of the therapy, the young people completed the wellbeing measure again and a feedback form. And we also collected parents' feedback because we wanted to explore the differences between the young person's and the parents' perceptions of art therapy and that young person's journey as well. Next slide, please. Okay, so um, this is an image that was produced by one of our patients during their art therapy. So this patient is 13 years old, living with chronic kidney disease and being worked up for a kidney transplant, which is a really scary thing to be facing. Um, and the medical team had actually had to put this patient's kidney transplant on hold because she was struggling with her mental health. And the team had worries about how well she would be able to cope with the post-transplant journey. Um, and we do know that there's lots of medications and compliance is really important post-transplant. And if the young person is not in the right um, headspace to be able to cope with that and they can't comply, then it might mean that they lose their transplant and then we're back to um, kidney disease and needing to start that process again. So it's really important that they are prepared and supported before this, before this surgery. Um, and at the end of her four months of art therapy, the team were pleased with the improvement to her mental health and they planned to start her transplant work up again, which was fab and a real, um, showed a real benefit of our therapy. But, um, sadly, since that therapy has ended, she's again struggling and her transplant is again on hold whilst we address this. So that just shows kind of the gap that's been left by um, not, not having art therapy, which I think is really important. Um, and the themes in red here are from her art therapy sessions and they link back to the psychosocial problems that were found in the studies on the earlier slides and sadly, these are themes that are common for many young people living with any long term health condition. So not specific to kidneys um, and they really need support and to address these. Next slide, please. So this is what we found um, for our first venture into art therapy. We had eight children and young people receiving art therapy sessions and of them, seven completed our pre and post wellbeing measure. Comparing the well-being scores pre and post art therapy, there was a positive increase in emotional well-being on average across the group, with the breakdown for each individual patient shown here on the screen. Um, and we were really pleased to see the positive impact of art therapy among our patients. Next, please. So notable areas of improvement across our sam sample were um, improved self-esteem, improved mood, increased energy and motivation, and increased relaxation. And two areas where we felt our patients did need extra support was for school engagement and optimism about the future. Um, and we found that after art therapy input, these areas were still in need of support. However, this finding does need to be considered within the context of the last year. So the COVID-19 pandemic and national lockdowns. Next slide, please. <clears throat> so here are some quotes from our young people about their art therapy experience. Um, overall, they found that the sessions were fun, but they mostly really valued the opportunity to express their feelings, to understand those feelings, and to build their confidence and their independence. Next slide, please. And this is some feedback from the parents. Um, so 62.5% of our parents completed the parental feedback forms, and 100% of their responses were positive. Um, so one quote from a parent which we found was particularly powerful was that the difference in her child's mental health from when she started the art therapy and finished the art therapy was like night and day. Um, and we found that was a really powerful visual. Um, next slide, please. And we've also included some feedback from the multi multidisciplinary team at the hospital about the impact of art therapy. So the medical team around Rachel have noticed a real change in mood, general well-being, and engagement with treatment. The medical team recognise that Rachel is making progress towards being emotionally and psychologically ready for the transplant journey. Um, and something that we did find interesting throughout doing this was that the positive impact of art therapy and the journey that the young person goes through for art therapy from start to finish um, is often more easily recognised by the parents, the carers and the healthcare professionals around that young person than perhaps by the young person themselves. And they find it harder to kind of identify and articulate the, the progress that they've made when, when the team around them can see that. We just thought that was interesting. Um, next slide, please. So to summarise, um, all in all, we felt that our ther art therapy was a great success and it has a really valued place as part of the patient's treatment. Virtual sessions had a positive impact 
and there was a unanimous positive reception from families. And there was no postcode lottery because patients from all over were able to access it through virtual means. Next, please. Okay, so the next steps in looking forward, we plan to offer more art therapy sessions for patients across child health. We wanna keep this going, we can see the benefit. Um, our patients loved it, our families loved it. We want to be able to keep providing this. Um, and we want to collect more robust evidence for the positive impact of art therapy. So this will include using more outcome measures, um, including the global rating of change questionnaire um, and collaborating with other centers to show the benefits of art therapy across centers and to widen the reach of art therapy as well. And we will also be sharing what we have learned at an international transition study day that we are delivering in June 2021. So we'll be able to share this with others. Okay, next. So that's my slides. Um, thank you for listening. Um, and I just welcome any questions or any thoughts. Have you noticed a real difference between virtual delivery and face-to-face? -face? Any positive differences you might be able to share? Yes. Yes, so um, one thing that we've really noticed with virtual delivery of um, art therapy, but also of our youth support as well, um, is that young people who might be more reluctant to engage with these therapies and to um, engage with support, um, they feel more comfortable doing it by virtual means and being able to join perhaps from home than before when we were doing one support. As being a hospital team, they'd have to come into the hospital somewhere that they already spend a lot of time in, perhaps didn't want to come into unless they had to. So to be able to offer art therapy virtually means that they can be in the comfort, their comfort space of their own home um, and, and kind of have that privacy as well, if they're joining from a room in their house, to be able to really engage and open up in these sessions. Um, so yeah, and also the other thing about kind of geographical location is that we're able to have a much wider reach to, to offer it virtually because we can reach people all the way across Wessex, which is um, kind of the patient cohort that we cover at our hospital. Ellie, what other support do you put in for children waiting kidney transplants? Then what would no normally be happening for them? Why, why has the art therapy made such a difference to, to change things? So they would usually receive um, quite a lot of sort, um, support from the multidisciplinary team. So they've got a nurse, a consultant, dietitian, pharmacist. Um, and since myself and Sarah joined the team, youth support. Um, but there's something about art therapy and it not feeling formal and it being about kind of being creative and being able to be artistic that has really helped our young people to um, kind of explore their feelings in a different sense to coming into a clinic room and having to discuss it in what is kind of a formal environment. Um, and I think that that has really shown a benefit. Uh, we, our art amongst our patients is really popular. There wasn't a patient who didn't want to get involved with, with the art therapy. Um, and I think that that's something that we haven't been able to offer as a hospital team. Um, so, yeah. Thank you. I'm just conscious of time and I think we should probably move on so we can probably sweep up the other questions later if that's okay with everyone. Thank you so much, Ellie. That's really interesting. And I'm just delighted to hear about the success of it. And thank you for being here and sharing today.